Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we're here for another episode of the Racing Debrief. And today we're going to talk about Richmond, the Xfinity Series, and the Cup Series. Let's jump right into it. Uh, first off, in the Xfinity Series race, I'm going to be honest, both races this week were kind of boring, um, in my opinion. I think Rich is one of those tracks that isn't the most thrilling. I do think the Xfinity Series race um, had a decent amount of passing going on, but it really wasn't anything too wild. Of course, the main highlight is, um, was it Joey Gase? Was it Joey Gase? Maybe. <laughs> and Dawson Cram, I believe it was those two, um, had little little issues with each other. Um, you know, bumpers were thrown. That was a big highlight uh, online, you know, all over social media. That's cool. Another social media moment with uh, NASCAR things. I mean, throwing your bumper at somebody's car um, <laughs> is definitely a move. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously we've seen helmets thrown, Hans device thrown, but um, throwing the rear bumper of your car at another car is um, is quite a move to make. So that is, uh, yeah, I, mean, I thought that was really cool. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's really the highlight from the Xfinity Series race. But um, Chandler Smith wins that second one for him of the year. Of course, he already won at Phoenix a few weeks ago. Um, he was able to, of course, win that race after Justin Allgaier had his issues with two laps to go and getting a flat tire. So Chandler Smith able to really have a dominant win this time. Uh, pretty much killed it at Richmond. Him and uh, Eric Amarola, who won both stages. So, um yeah, those, those are the main guys. I mean, the Gibbs cars, pretty good at Richmond. I mean, you always see them in contention at that track. So, uh, not really surprising, but um, yeah. Just, uh, you know, overall solid. Not really super memorable, though. I'm not going to lie here and be like, wow, that was the most amazing thing. Um, because it just kind of was a race. I mean... Richmond hasn't, again, provided that most excitement. And, uh, you know, that's where we get to the Cup Series race. Of course, that's the main the main talking point here uh, of the racing debris. So, the race started a little bit later than expected. Not much later, but a little bit later just due to the fact that it was raining. But, being a short track, uh, most short tracks, flatter tracks, whatever you want to define as a short track... Um, those tracks are able to run with uh, rain tires. I believe besides Bristol and Dover because the banking, but um, all the tracks that are about a mile or smaller, so, you know, your short tracks, uh, Martinsville, Richmond, North Wilkesboro, New Hampshire, assuming I will be part of that later this year, um, those types of tracks can run with the rain tires on ovals. So... Oh, Phoenix is another one, but it doesn't really rain in Phoenix much. Um, but yeah, I mean, those tracks, you can run the rain tires. So NASCAR is not going to run it super wet uh, like they do at potentially a road course. But, you know, they'll run it when the track is damp. So um, the track was a little damp. You know, they dried it out, stopped raining, got close to the start time. But uh, yeah, they said, no, we're going. So... Uh, you know, put the rain tires on. I believe uh, it was about 30 laps they ran on that. This is the best 30 laps of the whole race. Uh, you know, a lot of moving around the track. You had three, four wide through some of the corners. <coughs> Just overall, real good racing. So I think that it's one of those things that that's good to see, of course. NASCAR willing to do that. Of course, we've seen it with North Wilkesboro last year. I believe it was in the heats for the All-Star Race. Um, so I think like the day before the uh, All-Star Race happened. Or earlier in the day. I don't remember how that worked out. But something at North Wilkesboro, the heats for the All-Star Race, I know it was that, um, did have the rain tires. But seeing a points race shows you know that willingness to race with those tires. So... That's good to see. My thoughts with the rain tires, or whatever they want to call them. I don't know if they want to call them rain tires. They're like wet weather tires or what they want to call wet weather tires. So that way it's not rain tires. 
My thought with that, though, is taking an approach that we're not going to throw a caution and say this is when you got to change tires, right? Wasn't a fan of that. Again, I think that a lot of people use Formula 1 as the example. Formula 1 does a lot of rain racing, so in that situation, the FIA, which of course is the equivalent to that is NASCAR, says it's a rain race, it's a wet weather race. So when the FIA says wet weather race, Formula 1 races start on the full wets or intermediate tires. But from there, it's up to you. It's up to you as a team. When are you going to pit, right? When are you going to come and change your tires if the track's drying out? So I think it would have been interesting to see, okay, track's drying. Let's go and pit now. You know, you're going to pit a lap 30, 35, 40. You're going to stay out on those tires. Like, I think to see that strategy is better than NASCAR just saying, pit stop, everybody, you have to switch, right? Because essentially that's what it was. They said, okay, 20 laps, you got to switch. Now, we did see this again with the Truck Series race. Um, Martinsville, I believe it was last year, two years ago, whatever it was. But really seeing with the Cup Series, I think, really shows their willingness to do it. Because, again, the Cup Series is the top, the big, big level. Most people are going to watch that for NASCAR compared to a Truck Series race. You know, you're going to watch a Truck Series race if you're super hardcore into it, but... I mean, cup race, you're going to get so many more people watching it. So to have that willingness um, on a bigger event like this on Easter, I think is the, uh, you know, a key sign that they're willing to do those types of races. So again, I think just improving that um, and saying you can switch when you want to, I think is what we need to have. Kind of like on the the road course of that discussion a few years ago when we started having rain races in general. Because, again, that was something that was in some of the Xfinity races years ago. You know, you've seen it when they raced to Montreal in the wet, that type of thing. When the caution's thrown, it starts to rain, so everybody can switch tires. Same idea, just let the race play out, right? You don't need to throw a caution for tire changes. Um, so the end of stage one, we'll skip towards that because that's where a little bit more of the discussion of the rain race comes in. Um, Suarez spun, or yeah, he had a crazy spin, like he was going to save it, but he ended up spinning out and, uh, you know, from there it goes to the end of the stage. Now there was seven laps to go, so I don't really know why the decision was end the stage, right? Normally NASCAR will go in and they'll say, okay, seven laps to go. We can get this going, you know, three, four, um, five laps to go, right? Whatever you want to see in that range, three, four, five laps. This in here that it said, no, we're good. We're going to end the the stage. Then run more laps of dry pit road. Again, I get it. The safety of the pit members is very important. You know, keep them all safe. When they're jumping over the wall, pitting cars that are coming at you 50, 60 miles an hour, however fast they go at Richmond on pit road, right? Maybe a little less, maybe 40. But again, whatever that speed is between 40 and 60 miles an hour, you got to keep the guys safe on pit road. I understand that. You know, it's a risky job. They can either slip on the wet or a tire, you know, somebody can lock up their tires and slide way worse than they would in the, the dry. So things can happen, and I get that. But I think spending so much time with a race, just driving around, wasting laps, is not what you want to see, right? And then half that time I was just chilling. I was like not really engaged when I'm watching. And I want the race to be engaging. And I think that that really wasn't because there wasn't anything happening. It's just them doing pace laps to dry the track, right? And I think it's difficult to watch a race like that if the last few weeks have been really engaging. I mean, like I said in the race in debris for Bristol, I didn't leave this seat, right? I mean, we don't normally record in this location. This is the first race in debrief in this spot. And again, I didn't leave this chair. This is exactly where I sit and watching the race on the TV right there. I did not leave this chair for Bristol during, you know, most of the race. I mean, I was sitting here 
you know, I'd go do something real quick, you know, do laundry, run out during the stage. But I think that if you're going to be in that situation, just red flag it. Dry pit road for five, ten minutes. Try to keep race laps going. I think that's the direction you have to go. That That's my take on that. Um, so, yeah, that's that. Most of the rest of the race was relatively boring. Uh, we've seen throughout most of, I believe it was stage one, the splitting of strategies of who was going to do uh, one stop in the stage and do two. So we've seen that play out. Remember that was stage two? Yeah, it was stage two. Yeah, stage two, we've seen that strategy play out, right? Yeah, because stage one had the competition caution, then it went to the end. So stage two, we see that strategy play out, and that put Kyle Larson behind when there was a caution due to, you know, middle of that strategy. Really bad caution. Kyle Larson was behind. Alex Bowman got put behind. I know those two were the ones that really hurt by it uh, because they were on the one stop compared to guys like Truex. I believe Hamill and Bell, they were all on the two stop strategy. So middle of that really, really bad caution. Kyle Busch goes into the wall. Barely, you know, has an issue. Scrapes the wall and turn one and two. Gets back going on the back straight. Completely fine. Um, you know, I think in that scenario, you don't need to throw the caution. I think there's a lot of times where NASCAR is inconsistent with their cautions. And I think in that, the engaging part of Richmond was that strategy, right? What was going to happen? Were we going to see the guys on one stops like Larson and Bowman? Were they going to come out on top? Or were we going to see guys like Truex, Hamlin? I think Logano would have been on it as well. Bell, like those guys, how was their strategy going to work out? But they all, you know, kind of lost that strategy when this caution mid-cycle of that strategy playing out for something real dumb. So we go to the end of that stage... And, you know, going to stage three, and you see everybody pay when it's pit stop time. Nobody's trying the strategy because they don't think you want to get caught out. Uh, only one they really tried to think strategy-wise was Christopher Bell, and he got messed up by speeding the pits. So, I think overall, just for the race, it was relatively boring. I mean, I'm going to be honest, I, I put a post on Twitter about it, I was like... This is not it. Um, you know, I mean, I read it on the Reddit threads. I was commenting on there. I was like, this is just, you know, not it. Right? The race is, uh, is boring. I mean, I'm going to be completely honest. That that was not it. I was sitting here genuinely just waiting for the end of the race so I could record this video and go do something else. Like, 100%. Normally when the race going on, I'm like, all right, this is fun. I'm, I'm excited about it, but... Richmond going into it wasn't super excited, and then when the race actually happened, I just wasn't. It's, it's difficult to be engaged in a race that was just that <laughs> boring. I'm completely honest. It was just so uninteresting. Um, end of the race, though, I and I, I made a tweet about that after, or post, since it's on X. Um, uh, we don't do tweets anymore. Um, we do posts. And uh, basically, I was just like, those last laps saved it. So at the end of the race, uh, you have Kyle Larson getting loose. Bubba Wallace gets right underneath, uh, right behind him, makes slight contact with him. Again, Larson's losing the car. Um, you know, probably would hit the wall, something like that. Just spun out by himself, and Bubba Wallace came to hit him just a little bit, spun him sideways. Larson was able to not lose any spots really. I think he lost two. He fell behind Bowman and uh, behind Bubba Wallace, who's right there. Uh, but he managed to not hit the wall or anything. Brings out a caution, literally a lap and a half away from ending the race. Truex is like on the back straight, two laps to go. Brings out the caution. First overtime of the season, which is real wild. I mean, you know, normally we see so many overtimes in NASCAR race. I feel like last year, every race ended in overtime. So, you know, to think of the start of the season too. Daytona, Atlanta, with Bristol in there, Surrey to the Americas. A lot of tracks you would think would result in potential overtimes did not. So, first overtime of the season. And, um, yeah. I mean, everybody had to pit. Tires were just so worn out. I'm surprised that 
not one driver or maybe two. So let's risk it, right? There's only 15 guys on the lead lap. I mean, if you're in 15th, 16th, you know, you're the last few guys in the lead lap. I mean, I've seen, uh, you know, towards the end of that, you had Bowman, I think, back there. Maybe he was a lap down, but he was close to it. i seen, like, Ty Gibbs was right there. Uh, you know, somebody like that, I'm surprised that, you know, crew chief didn't just say, hey, let's stay out. Or maybe even just take two tires, gain a bunch of spots. Because, obviously, tire wear mattered, but I would have liked to have seen... Maybe somebody, you know, one or two guys just take a risk and say, well, we're already in 14th. Let's try and risk it. See if we can get something better than 14th. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you had that. But, again, coming off the pits, Denny Hamlin had a faster pit stop than Joe Logano and Martin Truex, who were the two right there. It was uh, Truex leading Logano second, Hamlin third. So Hamlin had a significantly faster pit stop. I think Truex and Logano were at about 10.3, something like that. Hamill was at like 9.9, maybe a little little bit closer on that, but 9.9 I believe is where he was at. So when he had that faster pit stop, gained him some time, he came out ahead of Truex and Logano. That's when the race got real wild. On the restart, Hamill gets the lead. And uh, after the race, uh, that restart was, you know, reviewed a few times by broadcasts. And we'll dive into that in a second and why that was reviewed. But on the start, Hamlin got ahead of Truex, pushed on the track just slightly, sort of going down the, down the back straight. That got Hamlin ahead going into the last lap. The guy was able to get by Truex. Larson got next to Truex, who then uh, decided he was going to slam into him. So you have Larson and Truex slamming each other on the back straight. Turn three and four, they're hitting each other, going to the finish line even after the race. Um, Larson slams back into Truex. He's like, bro, why are you hitting into me? Uh, Because, I mean, there was really nothing between them. Um, I think Truex was just kind of annoyed that he lost the race. I mean, he led 238 laps of it. And, uh, you know, to lose at the very, very end, I think is, you know, it's got to be tough, obviously. Um, I can only imagine that. You know, I I myself am very, very competitive and very passionate about winning whatever I'm involved in. So I can understand that situation, that frustration, and that level of absolutely dominating most of that race and to lose has to be real hard because every driver out there is super, super competitive. So I understand that situation, how Truex is going to be very upset about that. So I don't necessarily think he was mad at Larson. I think that's what you know he was saying. I think a lot of the broadcasts are saying that as well. He wasn't really mad at Larson, but Larson was just the guy that was there, right? He was the one who happened to be in that spot. And he was the one that got hit into. So, I mean, Truex came out and be hitting Denny Hamlin's bumper a few times at the end of the race. Like, I thought at first, I'm like, oh, he's going to go congratulate him. But nah, he was just genuinely mad because he, he ended up slowly. He just rammed into him. So, uh, yeah. While the race, Denny Hamlin got a second win of the season. So that puts him up there with William Byron, each having two wins now. So you have William Byron, Denny Hamlin, Daniel Suarez, Kyle Larson, Christopher Bell. Each with wins. So, <coughs> who, 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 eh, I don't know why I said who. Um, I don't know. I don't know where that was going. Um, either way, the restart, Martin Truex thought Denny Hamlin jumped it. NASCAR said they weren't reviewing it. They showed it multiple times in the broadcast after Truex said that in this post-race interview. Uh, the Hamlin jumped it, and I mean, it's difficult to say, but I mean, looking at where the line is on the track, I think Hamlin launched maybe like a second before it, but it's very, very hard to tell. I mean, they're still side-by-side rolling through that box. I think Hamlin just slightly gets ahead of him, but I, I don't think it was too obvious to say he jumped the start, right? I think that Hamlin wanted to jump the speed a little bit faster. 
rolled forward a little bit more, but he was still most side by side with Truex, so I don't really think it's um, <laughs> saying he jumped the start or the restart. I mean, it's close, but clearly NASCAR didn't think it was reviewable. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was, it was close, but I don't think that he jumped the start. So, that is that. That's the race for Richmond. Um, you know, I don't think Richmond deserves two races. I think that it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. You know, I think we need to have some different tire. Again, the discussion on short tracks, whether it be tires or whether it's more power or anything like that. Again, I guess they were running a sensor in Truex car to, to get data about more power or something NASCAR was running. I'm not entirely sure all of what that did, but that's the stuff that I sort of picked up about it. So we'll see. Oh, that's what everybody believes it is, but NASCAR's just saying now we're just running it just for just for the memes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that overall Richmond doesn't need two races. I know it's been a big talking point in the schedule. You know, does Richmond get two races next year? I don't think so. I think if NASCAR wants to make Easter a tradition and make that like their big event, of course, you know, looking at holidays in America that are big days of everybody being together, you know, family wise and having something to watch on TV together. I think Easter's a good market for NASCAR to jump into, a good slot to jump into. Uh, I mean, it's pretty much mostly the only day outside of Thanksgiving and Christmas that you'll have stores closed for, that really a lot of people are just together. Uh, I mean, not every store like you have for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but most stores will be closed for I mean grocery stores are closed some big stores I'm not sure um Target or Walmart maybe Target is I mean Lowe's is I mean I had to block off some things last night uh make sure nobody did thievery so um you know companies like that at least are closing more for Easter so I think NASCAR jumping in and saying hey we're gonna take and make Easter a tradition a few years ago they did Bristol Dirt in 2022, 2023, I think you got to pick a track and stick with it. Because, again, it's interesting to pick. It's not like other holidays kind of stay on a similar date. I mean, you can get Easter being in late March, early April. So you got to pick something that's going to work in all those dates. But I think that picking a track that's good... And sticking with it and kind of making that the tradition, right? We're going to run this track on Easter every year. I think North Wilkesboro is a solid track for Easter to make the tradition. But we'll see. I don't think North Wilkesboro a points race and move the all-star race around. We'll see. But that's my thought on it. Again, I think Easter is a solid day to do for that. Again, you have uh, football, NFL games play on Thanksgiving. NBA's thing is Christmas, so why not on a another big holiday have NASCAR make it their thing? I think that's a good idea. Uh, I just think you got to put out a track, stick with that same track, make that a tradition, build it up as like this is our holiday to run our event on, make it a big event, right? So you know, I think you can run something for Easter. But pick something good. And I think Richmond in general, let's go somewhere else, right? Let's let's take that date, put it somewhere. There wasn't many fans. I think Richmond's been suffering from that. And you see some of the tracks that maybe aren't bringing in those big crowds as much. Go to one day and it really works. I mean, Pocono had that. New Hampshire, uh, I think that really helped New Hampshire. So... Those tracks that had two going to one worked for those places. I'll be interested to see how it is at New Hampshire when I go this summer. Last year, I didn't really get to see the full effect of that because uh, it rained. So a lot of people weren't there. But I will be interested to see how big the crowd is at New Hampshire for one singular date this year. Hope it doesn't rain out the race again like it did last year. 
But, again, I think Richmond could really benefit from that as well. So, I think that's where it needs to go. Move it from there, put it on another track. I don't know yet where the track it could go, but some other NASCAR-owned track or hosted event, go there. Do that. Um, But, yeah, that's my thought on that. Richmond, kind of mid. So, yeah. We'll see. Next week, where are we going? Oh, what is next week? I'm trying to think what it could possibly be before I look it up. Hmm. It's not Talladega. I want to guess. I want to figure it out. Is it Dover? It's not Dover. Oh, Texas? Is it Texas? It's Martinsville. Martinsville, then Texas. Ooh, <laughs> Martinsville. I, bro, I hate that that's the reaction of Martinsville. Uh, Goodyear, bring the tires from Bristol. Let's do it up. But uh, either way, Martinsville next week. Is it all three series? I think it's... Maybe it's just trucks. Let's see, schedule. No, all three. Okay. Trucks Friday, Xfinity Saturday, Cup Sunday. Okay. Texas is all three as well. Talladega is the one that's just two. Okay. So next week for videos, we will be back with the racing debrief, of course, once again. And, um, yeah, we're going to have a big week because we have trucks, Xfinity, and Cup. All at Martinsville, and we have Formula One uh, with Japanese Grand Prix. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, I really enjoyed doing this video literally right after the race. I feel like that was super, super good. I feel like some of the other times that I've done the racing debrief, I've recorded it, obviously, the day uh, when the cup race ends. That's typically the last thing in these videos, but... I think recording it, literally, I turn the TV off and turn my computer on to record, right? The last interview that I seen was uh, Kyle Larson, post race interview. Second that they went to ads, TV off, let's, you know, let's get recording. And I think that that's a good idea. So we'll see next week. I think it worked for this because it's such a late race that, <laughs> I mean, literally where I'm sitting I can just turn it on and record it. I mean, most most of the time, go in my room and I'll get distracted by something. But with this, I mean, my parents went to bed because it's the race was still going on at nine thirty. They got to be up for five in the morning, five thirty. So it made sense. So I'm just here. Turn the t- or turn the camera on. Let's record. But uh, either way, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week with another episode of the Racing Debrief. Of course, make sure if you're watching on YouTube that you subscribe. If you're watching on X that you follow. There should be a follow button somewhere up in this general area. A YouTube subscribe button in this general area down here. Uh, So, you know, make sure you do subscribe or follow. And check out the opposite platform if you're watching on one. Check out the other one. (laughs) Uh, But, yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of the race and debrief and we'll see you guys in the next one a lot of cool videos coming out this week and uh yeah we'll see you guys then